Hello everyone, welcome to another video for the engineer and in this video I'm going to discuss about some of the basic things about the cloud connector specific to the issues perspective and I'll just try to give some basic information in case you are looking for more advanced things and you can join our training for BTV and other things. Yeah, and one quick announcement that which I'm going to make today is like I'm having the HANA advanced batch which we are going to start soon in uh, first week of uh, August or something. So that would be a HANA advanced batch. So, so there I'm going to discuss about the scale out environment. Okay, so we'll also discuss about the NUMA analysis. We'll do the workload management. We also do the admission control. And also some high level troubleshooting. So deep dive, you can say, um, into the troubleshooting areas, then the table redistribution. So, in this training, I, I will be focusing more on the scale out scenario and also the advanced topics. So these are just a very basic, I mean, some of the topics which I specified. So if you're interested, you can join there, but ensure that you understand HANA before you come to the advanced training. I don't want to start it from the basic. So if somebody who doesn't know, please don't join. It's not for money. It's for only people who actually want to upgrade their skill set. They want to know the right skills at the right time. They want to understand scale out environment. They want to understand what's the necessary prerequisites. They want to do the calculations. Apart from that, also the replication side, how are we going to do that? And the node removal, HD integration, you know, so uh, all these things we are going to discuss, but this is only for those people who actually have the basic understanding of HANA. If you don't know this, please don't join this training, okay? Because I have no time to give you the basic. If you don't know particularly, then you can join my advanced HANA administration training. There I discuss everything which will make you uh, you know, quite comfortable to work in all the environment, but somebody who is already having 10, 15 years experience and they wants to, they want to upgrade this skill to a different level on these topics, then you can connect with my team and you can enroll for this course. Okay, there will be high charges, of course, because of the scale out setup, but yeah, you can connect with my team and then they will be giving you the information. So that is all. And also apart from that, we are starting many trainings, like you can say AWS also, I'm having a cloud LM all hands-on total hands-on activities we will be seeing end to from the beginning till the end then btp and then we have this ohtb migration starting from august again we have a new batch uh, apart from that we have also the s4 hana of course this one s4 hana administration then we have the hana admin as well hana administration batch so in s4 hana we include the fury as well like i cover all these things like saml configurations those are like there and apart from that, we have also some other trainings, particularly like coming to the CPI. These are the recently introduced training. So CPI, or you can also say, uh, you know, like particularly on Azure side, Azure training also your, and there are also a lot of important topics, particularly if you say cloud connector, cloud connector, I'm going to start a very, you know, another batch where I'll only talking about the cloud connector because I have seen very less number of people who actually understand the cloud connector concepts, not as just the theory. I'm talking about the configuration. So all these things I'm going to discuss there. So you can just, uh, you know, check our social media sites and soon we'll be having a lot of updates coming. So now let's jump to our cloud connector topic. I'm just going to discuss a very, uh, you know, some important issues on the cloud connector side. So here is my cloud connector. Let me try to log into this and then we will see one sec. Okay, so I am log I log into my cloud connector. So, so <clears throat> the important thing in cloud connector is like how we are going to ensure that suppose my cloud connector is not starting. Okay, I'm not connected to any BTP account. I'm not connected. So those things I'm not going to discuss here. If you want to know, you can just join the training and all, but my more focus is on the uh, troubleshooting area, how I can how I can troubleshoot in the cloud connector side. So the very basic thing, if you want to see in the cloud connector, you can see here, these are your daemons. Uh, these are your services so cloud connector is always installed in this location so you can just see cd opt you need a jvm for that definitely otherwise you cannot install so once you install it you can see all the log files here in the log location okay so this is what you can see here so in case you know like you see the you install the cloud connector and you see there are some certain issues are there so you need to check for this log in this trace file so this is going to help you a lot to understand and also suppose you want to also see any access specific issues so you can open this file as a core and so this will be giving you you know any issues or anything so you can see 
I mean, it's okay. Some of the basic errors are there, but that's all right. Similarly, you can also, if you want to see the cloud connector side, so you can just go to your troubleshooting area and you can see. Because I'm not connected any uh, you know, accounts here right now, so you won't be able to see that. Also, you will see, you know, like for an example, you want to see the high memory usage or maybe cloud connector is not coming up. So in this scenarios also, you can go to this directly logs and traces here. So here you can see the same location what I accessed and here you can see what are the alerts you are having. You can see there are some certain alerts. You can also see the files here and you can read it from there if any issues are there. So apart apart from that, you can also see some of the, you know, you can see how many warnings are there and what are the important alerts and this is your just so you can open this file and you can read about this. This is the standard file for your checking the access and also you can see here the setting of the lock the trace collection because cloud connector is a very small component. So there are two, three issues which I'm going to explain right now. The first thing is your cloud connector is not starting up. OK, so there is a many. There are many times I've seen that your cloud connector doesn't start. So the import what happens when cloud connector doesn't start or cloud connector goes down. For an example, you are having a connection. You're having an s system. You're having a CPI and this is connected and in between you are having a cloud connector. So now you tell me, suppose you see some of the time like you did a cloud connector upgrade. For an example, you just did an upgrade from 2.16 to 2.17 or 2.18, which is the latest one, but let's go to 2.17. After that, you encountered that your cloud connector is not coming up because of whatsoever reason. So that is one of the aspect because here you need to see the compatibility of the Linux because this totally depends on the, uh, you know, like on the Linux platform. Because suppose you are installing Linux, so you need to see the minimum requirement. You need to refer to the product availability matrix here, and you can see whether your compatible Linux version is there. Because not all the Linux versions are supported for cloud connector. Even you are in SLES 15, SLES uh, and RHEL 9, you need to see which version is supported for this cloud connector. That's one of the major issue. What we do, I mean, uh, this is part of your planning. If you fail it, then it will not be working. And sometime what happens? Suppose you are doing a new installation. Okay, so you are doing a new installation, and in that case. You got an issue that oh your cloud connector is not starting up because you're getting an error that the port is already in use. So this is very common because many cases I always uh, ask people to do a dedicated installation in the cloud connector instead of sharing the cloud connector instance with some other host. You should not do that. But the standard default port of cloud connector is eight four four three. So we are what we are going to do is so this port should be available in your host. So whenever you are doing it, always check your ports which are available. You can find the commands in the internet or else you can just check if your ports are available or not. So what you, all you can do is you have to use the command, uh, you know, like this one. So to, to len p because uh, this one, why we use it, this is a replacement of a net start. So earlier we used to use the sudo ss hyphen net start and that used to give us the details. But in my server, the net start is not installed because I'm using the latest version of Linux. So Netstat is not more mandatory, so you can just run it. You can see whether your 8443 port is listening or not. If the port is available there and I have nothing installed in this, which is using this port, then I can comfortably go ahead and install the cloud connector. In case you are not doing that, in case you see the port in use, so you have an option, you can change the port assignment. So not necessarily you have to use the cloud connector default port, but what SAP recommends, yeah, you can use 8443, but many people are not aware of that. We can also change the cloud connector port. And to change it, so there is a standard command is there for Linux and Windows. You can just use that and you can just change the port. So that is one of the way to get rid of this issue. But it's always good if you make a practice that I will be always using the 8443. So ensure you just check the port availability before you do the installation. So that is very, very important. Otherwise, you are going to face an issue. Another thing, so suppose your cloud connector is running for an example, situation three. So I'm going only going to cover three scenarios here. So, but there are other scenarios as well. I mean, in case you want to know more, either you can connect you with my team for the training and all, or else, uh, you know, like you can schedule a session with me for some specific topic. I'll help you there. So then coming to the next issue, suppose you are having a Sohana system, you are having a CPI, and in between you are using a cloud connector, or because cloud connector you can use for any B2B products, just that you need to map your sub account with the cloud connector and expose your backend systems like an s or ECC, whatever it is. So you need to expose that to the cloud connector so that that system will be visible in the destination management in your B2B sub account. 
and these are definitely specific to the sub accounts only. So suppose I understand that my cloud connector goes down here. So what, what is the impact? So if you see the cloud connector goes down, it means your entire connection is broken. So CPI, suppose you are having 100 iFlows, all the iFlows will be impacted because that's a complete downtime stand till situation, standstill situation for the integration suite because all your iFlows, whatever even set up here, so you can see those are connected to S4HANA through the cloud connector. If the cloud connector connection is broken, then why, right? All the iFlows will be impacted. And if these are your production system, then obviously nothing will be working. All the integration will fail. So that's the reason cloud connected is a very small component, but yet so powerful because that's the reason to plan it very carefully. So the problem here in cloud connector is, so cloud connector has a very simple file system. It is it is a standard component, so I'm not going to do having a database or something. You just install the component and you just connect that component with your, it's a connector kind of thing. So the standard location of installation is this one. So all the logs are also written in here. Suppose for an example, you increase the trace level of cloud connector. So you can also increase the trace level. For an example, suppose for some of the troubleshooting, we increase the trace, okay? And the trace size, suppose you can see if you are, all the logs are written here. If this log is full, maybe something like that, OPT, SAP, or SCC is maybe 20 GB. And Cloud Connector, maybe you increase the trace to collect more data and you just want to troubleshoot it for maybe for one or two days. And each log, each trace file size would be reaching 50 MB. Then the new trace file will be created. So similarly, if you see that the trace size is going up so because you have given increase the trace level, so more log file will be written here. So by that, this will be full. The, the moment this installation directory is full, it means your cloud connector is down. So that's the reason whenever SAP asks you to increase the trace level or anybody in your project asks you to increase the trace level, do not just increase it just for the sake of it. No, you need to check your file system. You need to always check how much file system space left out here. In case you see 20 GB or you're having 10 GB, that is okay. I mean, you can sustain for a day or maybe two days, even with the trace level one or two. So you need to see that, you know, what is your trace level there in that case? you can have it. But if you see 5 GB spaces that you're increasing your trace for maybe 24 hours or more than that, that's not acceptable. So always be, you know, focus on that area that you just, because for you, it's just a trace level incre increment. But if system goes down, SAP will not be responsible because you have increased the trace level and that's a request from your end. No matter if you're in hack or rise, but the responsibility is from customer side, you ask to increase the trace level and you have a consent for that. So that's the reason you need to be very careful on this area. And if your file system is full, then cloud connect is down and everything is impacted. And now when you restart the cloud connect, when you set up the cloud connector again, you have to ensure that, I mean, when you start the cloud connector, again, you have to reprocess your failed messages and a lot of things to be taken care of. So that's the reason it's always good to protect your system. And then this is the way you can do. So primarily the port issue, second is the compatibility, third is your file system. These are the three issues that I want to cover in this topic. So I'll be putting some more troubleshooting videos. But yeah, as I can say, you guys need to take a membership. You need to cheer me up. Then I can give you more content. Knowledge is no limit, but it cannot be free. Of course, you know, just you need to be part of the member. If you just I'm not asking anyone to join my training. It's your choice. You want to join the training. You want to get some good hands on experience. It's your choice. But if you want to just learn from YouTube, that is also OK. I don't mind that because that's the reason we have uh, the premium videos and also we have normal videos. Normal videos are for open for everyone. Everybody can visit the you know the YouTube channel and they can see it. But people who are taking the membership, like for them, there will be troubleshooting videos. There will be some more quality content and also some of the other information wise videos would be there. So every month there will be four videos. And if you have also any suggestions, any topic you want in your mind, you can also put it there. And also from next month onwards, I will be coming live in YouTube channels, maybe once in a month only for the members. So I'll be take all your questions. I'll try to answer. So these are the benefits you are going to get it. So grab the opportunity now, take the membership and get the benefit. That's how it is. And YouTube membership has no relation with my training. You cannot ask me discounts for the training because just because you are a YouTube member. So please respect that. And that's how that's all for now for the cloud connected troubleshooting. But as I say, there are a lot of other areas also to look in. But for now, I just keep it here. So this is your cloud connector issues. And I hope you like the video. In case you like it, just like, share, and subscribe. And also, please share this video if, you know, to your business friends and uh, who can get benefit out of this videos. So once again, thanks for watching and take care.